Coronavirus pandemic has forced all of us to change a lot of our plans, and that includes vacations. A lot of Americans are now turning to RVs so they can safely hit the open road. The pandemic has many Americans looking for a new way to travel, and the allure of what's essentially a self-contained hotel room on wheels is leading new customers to RVs. So we just arrived back in California and have just unhitched this guy. So we drove all the way to Colorado in order to pick up our very first RV. And now we're at a place of having to prep everything so that we can actually get on the road. It's been quite a learning process because there's so much that we need. We're talking electricity, Wi-Fi, water and sewage. We have to figure that whole thing out. Kitchen supplies, decorations for the RV, and just so much more. So we really want to use this as an opportunity to share our experience as newbies so we can help you if you are also in the market. So it took us three months of research to figure out what type of RV that we wanted and also to find this exact one. So we primarily used Facebook Marketplace, RV Trader, and Craigslist. And for the longest time, we actually thought we were gonna get a Class C. But at the last minute, we actually had a family member who offered that we could use their truck. So that kind of changed everything for us. And also our budget was $20,000. So it definitely was more affordable to go with the travel trailer that way. Now our plan is to be on the road for about 12 months. Maybe it'll be a little shorter if we don't like it or maybe we'll go a little bit longer if we love it. But our goal is to do it for about a year and then go abroad again. And really what we do plan on doing mostly is boondocking and that's because of the price point for it. You know, if we don't have to spend 30 to 60 to $100 a night and we can save money that way, that's the route that we're gonna take. Once we got the trailer, the first thing that we did is we emailed our insurance broker. We had to let him know the VIN number so that he could make sure that we were covered in case anything happened. Also in case we got pulled over. So there are three things that you actually need to travel with. That is the proof of purchase, which is the bill of sale, the title, the original title that the other guy had for this trailer, proof of insurance. So for that we would just show them the email and confirm that we were insured that way. The next thing that we had to do is when we arrived in California, we had to go to the DMV and that was just so that we could actually transfer the title over to our name and also in the state of California. Now the cost of a trailer title in California is very expensive and probably the most expensive in the states and it's all varied upon how much you paid for the trailer, okay? So it's not based on the actual worth of the trailer. And be sure to actually bring your trailer with you to the DMV because they're actually gonna need to check the VIN number on your trailer to make sure that it actually matches the one on the title. So this is what we're gonna be towing our trailer in. Not that, over here. We have learned that there are three main types, well technically four, types of trucks that people use to tow their trailers. And so we actually have an Escalade here that it's an older one, but it's a half ton truck, okay? Then you have your three fourths ton, your one ton, a one ton single and a one ton dually. But again, this is kind of at the very beginning level and this is just what we have to work with. Quick side note on towing. We've learned a little bit more about the difference between our truck's towing capacity versus our truck's maximum payload. It's a little bit more complicated than just ensuring that our trailer will weigh less than 8,100 pounds. But thanks to Trish and Mark at KYD, they've helped us so much in understanding that our truck will be able to successfully tow this trailer with the amount of weight that we have in the truck.
We would love a three quarter ton, but that's just not in the cards for us now. So we actually had to do a lot of prep work to make sure that this bad boy is gonna actually tow our trailer. So we had to get new shocks. We had to get the compressor fixed because we didn't even know that it was broken. We had to get brand new tires. So we had to do a lot to make sure we're gonna be safe. We might be cutting it close a little bit, but from our experience driving from Colorado to California, we did just fine. And that was without the compressor working. So we're gonna see how we do and hopefully we don't have to make many stops the mechanic. Now for the essentials. So this is a rabbit hole that you can go down, you can look on Amazon for hours and find so many things that you feel like you need. But these are the core things that based on our research, we need so and we went out and got so we have this this is called a four-way we have read by many RVers that they swear by this and that we're going to need this not only for the lugs on our tires if we need to replace a tire but also for the tires on our trailer uh, the next thing is all these different wrenches so as you can see we have so many different sizes and that's because we're going to need them for many different things these two these actually work for our husky anti-sway hitch and then like this guy this three-fourths this is actually for our x chocks so we make sure that in our toolbox we have all of these different size wrenches. Moving on, we have these leveling blocks that you'll see most RVers have. And again, these are just great. I've heard them be called adult Legos so that you can actually make sure that you level them out the way that you need. The next thing that we got is this cute little PSI tool. And this is so that we can make sure that we are in alignment with the PSI that we need and not only our truck tires, but also our trailer tires because we know that's so important for safety. So this guy works great. And then the last thing that we have that we're really excited about is we have this little wagon, just great so that we can actually move things around a campsite if we need, or if we go fishing, which we're really excited to do, or just really move anything around. The Predator 3500 Inveta Mike. That's really bad. So next thing we had to figure out if we wanted to go with a generator or solar, very big question here, you know. Solar, even though it sounds cool, it was going to be much more expensive for us and learning to install it was going to take so much time. It just wasn't necessary for us for the plan that we have. Sounds great, but for us, 12 months, generator was the way to go. Oh shit. The absolute muddy disaster that we are going to have to deal with every week living in this trailer. So now the ugly truth of trailer life. That is that we are going to have to make sure that we dispose Disgusting. of all of our fluids. This is where our gray tank and black tank, the liquids come out. Clean water is obviously clean water. The gray water is for like the sink and the shower. And then the black tank is obviously all the black water coming from the toilet. AKA doo-doo, dookie, poo-poo. Yeah. And uh, we just have this nice little bucket that's got our latex gloves that we wear every single time to dump it. We got these nice rhino hoses. I wouldn't say it's a huge learning curve, like it's challenging, but it's definitely something you need to know. But if you're gonna be doing boondocking like us, we need to get used to really just knowing how to pop that bad boy in there, get it flushing out, getting on our merry way. And it's going to be so important for us to know where we can dump our sewage. So we are actually gonna be using the Campendium app. This app is so legit. It literally will show you dump sites near you and if the dump site actually has water as well. So at some places we might be able to, for free, dump our sewage and also fill up our trailer if need be. Because our trailer is pretty heavy, and like I explained before, our truck doesn't tow the heaviest load, uh, we're not gonna wanna be traveling with this guy full. So that's really important to note. 
We've learned always travel dry because it adds just so much more weight. So we were trying to figure out like what is the best way of getting Wi-Fi that is going to actually work so we're not in like dull spots when we're traveling and we couldn't find like one legit answer. The biggest takeaway that we've gotten is there's three ways people make sure their trailer has good Wi-Fi. We actually originally thought we'd go just on a hotspot but we've learned that's really if you're going to be going off on a trip for like a week but because we're gonna be so long, we had to get a router extender. This is really important for you if you're in the same boat as us and you're just trying to figure this out. We just purchased a King Wi-Fi Max router and extender, and we're really hoping that we don't find ourselves you know, struggling to get Wi-Fi on the road. So we'll definitely let you guys know how that goes. And now for the fun part. We gotta figure out where we're going, and I'm gonna need a map for that. What? Ow! Thanks so much for watching. We hope this was helpful. And if you guys want to follow our life on the road, please subscribe.